Hi, my name is Ethan Korngold. I'm the Division Chair of Interventional Cardiology and Structural Heart at the Provident Heart Institute in Portland, Oregon, and I'm going to share a challenging structural case with you entitled, Can I Call a Friend? Here are my disclosures. So this case involves a 74-year-old man with aortic stenosis and lightheadedness, particularly with exercise. He has coronary artery disease, status post coronary artery bypass grafting, and severe peripheral arterial disease, which we'll get into in a minute. As far as his TAVR sizing goes, relatively straightforward, with an annulus measuring 438 square millimeters, sizing to a 26 millimeter Sabian 3 valve. The issue with him is an issue of access. So he has severe peripheral arterial disease with aortoiliac disease, status post bilateral aortoiliac stents, uh, which were not adequate to pass a TAVR prosthesis. He's had bilateral carotid endarterectomies. He has a left subclavian artery occlusion with steel, so left axillaries out. He's got left osteocommon carotid stenosis and a severe calcified anomalous stenosis. And so, if we focus down on the uh, aortoiliac region on the uh, CT scan, you can see that just severe aortoiliac disease, not a good candidate for femoral access, not a candidate for transcable access due to heavy calcification, and uh, severe disease, uh, again, in the left subclavian, left carotid, and anomalous artery. So facing this uh, challenge, I decided to enlist a friend and planned for right carotid access TAVR, despite his history of carotid endarterectomy. And the plan was to put in left carotid uh, artery embolic protection, use shockwave intravascular lithotripsy to treat the calcified innominate stenosis, then deliver the Sapien 326 millimeter TAVR via the right carotid, and then follow it up with kissing covered stents in the innominate and left carotid artery due to his uh, history of cerebral hypoperfusion. Now, we have uh, at our center, we have extensive history in carotid access TAVR. We've done live cases. We've done uh, approximately 150 carotid access TAVRs. But this is the first time that we've combined it with shockwave lithotripsy uh, in uh, the innominate or carotid artery. So here we are with femoral access. We're uh, obtaining the working angle. You can see there's a significant calcification already in the aortic arch. At this point now, we've put in a uh, destination sheath from the femoral artery and put a NAV6 embolic protection device in the left uh, carotid artery. We have open access on the right common carotid artery uh, with uh, retrograde sheath placement with a, uh, an eight French sheath. And you can see there uh, this huge uh, lozenge of calcium and severe stenosis in the anomalous artery. So this is the, uh, the area where the uh, S3 sheath was to be delivered. So the plan was to treat this with a shockwave prior to uh, E-sheath placement. This is uh, expansion with a 7 by 60 millimeter shockwave device. We used a total of 150 pulses uh, on this uh, lesion. <coughs> and then used essentially the, the inchworm technique that we typically uh, use with a guideliner to advance guideliner over a challenging uh, coronary lesion. Um, and uh, you can see us uh, advance this 8 French sheath over the deflating uh, shockwave balloon into the aortic arch. At this point, then we were able to cross the aortic valve, uh, place the E-sheath, and then deploy the 26 millimeter Sapien 3 via the right carotid artery access. And here then is a deployment of the uh, Sapien 3 in the annulus. But we weren't quite done yet. At this point now, the plan was to do innominate and left carotid artery kissing stents. So here we are lining up the stents. We have the uh, we have ICAS stents 
uh, for the left carotid artery from the femoral artery and in the, uh, in the nominate artery from the right common carotid artery axis. There's deployment and then final angiogram shows improved uh, perfusion with expanded stents in the innominate and left common carotid. Thanks very much for your attention. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at ethan.cornbold at or on Twitter at ekgpdx. Thanks very much.